Hi, Paul again. At this point, you should have your SLO data, the pretest scores, and the post-test scores in an Excel spreadsheet. The spreadsheet should have been formatted in a manner that makes it easy to read and interpret the data. And you should have formulas in the spreadsheet to calculate the central tendencies of the data set, and that is the mean, the median, and the mode. Now it's time to create a picture of the data in the form of a histogram or frequency plot, which is what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So we're back to my APPR SLO data sheet from 2012 and 2013. Here are my pretest SLO scores going down in these columns, and here are my post-test or final exam scores going down in those columns. And at the bottom of the data set is where I have the mean, median, and mode or central tendencies calculated, and the mean, median, and mode for the final exam. So here's the post-test, and there's the pretest. Again, these numbers will give you some indication as to what that data set looks like. But I think I showed you in an earlier video that getting a clear picture of all the students and how they're arranged would require you to make a histogram or a frequency plot. And that's what we'll do right now. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of that data set and begin the process. So again, we're going to go ahead and make a frequency plot or histogram of these percent scores in this particular column. Now the first step is to go ahead and create the bins. The bins just give you an indication as to how am I going to arrange these tallying of actually looking at this data. So in other words, in my case, I'm going to put bins of every single test possibility from 0 to 100. You could go in every groups of bins of say 0 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, um, and they'll kind of put them into larger groups. Um, like again, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to go with every one. So I'm going to make the bin column here. And it's going to be a temporary column that I'll get rid of after I'm done with all the frequency plots. But I like to put a title in it anyway just so I know what it is and why it's there. So I'm going to start putting in some values for the bins 0, 1, oops, 2, etc. And I want a bin value for everything possible from 0 to 100 at an increment of 1. Typing on all of these numbers all the way down is going to take a little while. So I'm going to show you a little trick to go ahead and put a sequence of numbers into a column like this. So I'm going to select the 0 and drag down to the 2. And if you notice, I've got a little grab bar in the bottom right-hand corner of those selected cells. And if I hold my cursor over the top of that little bar, it gives me a little cross. And if I click and hold and start dragging down, it's going to start inputting into those cells the sequence of numbers in that same pattern that I started. So since I was counting at ones, it'll increase the each cell by one. If I was going by twos, you'd count by twos. If it was going by fives, you'd count by fives. So I overshot a little bit here. I want to go to 100, and I'll stop it there at 100 and let go. And so my bottom value for my bins are, is 100. That's the best possible score you can get on the test. And my lowest value, of course, is a zero. Okay, So we're all set there for the bins. And now we're going to go ahead and start making the histogram. And what's going to happen is this. I'm going to use data analysis, the data analysis tool pack, to start looking through this data set and start tallying the number of times a 17 occurred, or a 21 occurred, or a 30 occurred. And the way I'm going to do that is by using a data analysis tool pack. So right now, I'm on the Home tab. I'm going to go over to the Data tab and click on Data. And over here on the right-hand side, under Analysis Options, there is a Data Analysis option. If you don't see that there, you haven't loaded up the Data Analysis Tool Pack. And that's an Excel add-in. Um, if you haven't gotten it there, you want to go back and watch the video that I tell you how to do so. That's in the uh, Joomla Online instruction. So I'll click on the Data Analysis. And I'll come up with a new window. And I'm looking under the Data Analysis Tools. I'm going to search for Histogram and select that. Say OK. And a new window pops up. And like any of these windows in Word or Excel, you can go ahead and just grab that window and move it into places where it won't get in your way. I'm going to leave mine right here in this upper right hand corner. And now I'm going to start inputting data. Now, if you notice, uh, I'm looking for an input range. And I just clicked on a cell, and it actually thinks I, I want that to be that input range, but I don't. So I'm going to just delete that guy and get rid of it. Okay. So here's what it's looking for, an input range. In other words, what are the test scores that's going to start using to tally up those number of occurrences? My input range are these scores in this column. So the cursor is, I've got a blinking cursor ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and select that first score in that data column. Then I'll drag down the scroll bar 
So I get to the bottom of my data set, press the shift key, and holding it, I will click on that bottom value in that column. So my input range or my test scores are from C12 to C95, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to scroll back to the top. And now it's looking for the bin range. In other words, what kind of increments are going to be putting these scores into those bins? So my bin range is going to be these guys here. I want to click into that cell or into that little spot in the, in the window. And I will click on the very first value of that bin range. And again, drag down to the bottom. And hit the shift key, hold the shift key, and click over the 100. And so my bin range is from M12 to M112. I'm just going to drag this back up to the top. So I've got the input range. These are the scores it's going to be looking through. It's going to be putting them in for an increment of every one on the particular bin range. And now I'm going to go ahead and start tallying up this data. I could have it happen right here in the Excel spreadsheet, but I think it's best to have a new worksheet because you're going to get a lot of mess in terms of a lot of stuff on this one worksheet within the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to turn on the new worksheet ply and leave it selected like so and select OK. So what it's done now is it's taking me to that new sheet, as you can see down here, it's taking me to that new sheet within this Excel spreadsheet, and it's got the bins and the frequencies of those. So just so you know where we are, here are my old, that tab that I was working on a little while ago, the pre and post test scores. So here was, here's where I was, there's the bin numbers, there's all the data. Um, and the sheet one is the brand new sheet that has all that data all tallied. So I'm going to go back to it. So bin, frequency, here's each one of those particular possible scores, the frequency of those occurrences. So for example, this spot right here says that of a score of 9, there were three occurrences of a 9. Uh, for a score of 11, there are two possible scores. Now it might be, so right now it's selected in blue, meaning it's ready to be plotted. Now if you click someplace else, it's not actually ready to be plotted at this point. So I might have to go back and reselect all of this data here that I want to plot. So I'm just going to click on the bin, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And I'm going to hit my shift key and select. And now I've selected all of that data again to go ahead and make my frequency plot. Now it's important you have that more that's actually selected, and it's important that you also have the bin and the frequency selected too. So now I'm going to make the actual two-dimensional plot. So I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go to Column and hit the drop-down arrow for a 2D column and select it. And it makes the frequency plot in a flash. So now I'm going to just go ahead and move it to a new spot here on this particular worksheet and give it a larger size by just grabbing the bottom right corner and making it a little bit bigger. And here is the frequency plot. So first thing you might recommend, I might recommend you do is let's get rid of this key because you only have one data set on, it, on here anyway. So I'll just select that frequency key and just backspace and get rid of it. Um, the x-axis scale looks pretty good and the y-axis scale looks pretty good, but I'll show you how to change those in a second. The next thing I'm going to do is change this title because it just says frequency. I want to be maybe a little more specific. So I just selected the chart title put the cursor in there and I'm just going to go ahead and put a title in there, frequency for pre-test scores. So that's good. And I'll select out of the chart here for a second. And now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and make some changes to this x-axis. So again, I'm, out of, I'm outside the chart right now. I'm going to click back inside the chart. And I've selected now the x-axis. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to select format axis. And you get all kinds of options for the format of the, of the axis. Um, it's automatic right now, but I'm going to go ahead and just specify the interval unit. So if I change any sizes, it'll keep that particular interval unit. And I'm going to just click on that and use the 1. And then at the bottom here where it says position axis, right now it's plotting the data so that the data is occurring in between the tick marks. Your best bet is actually put it on the tick marks. So I'm going to click on that. So now you can see... For the score of a 5 on this exam, it actually occurred one time. So it actually lines up nicer with the tick marks. And I'll close that window. So now we've got a pretty decent looking frequency plot. Uh, what is really missing right now is some X and Y axis labels. So I'm going to just click outside the chart again for a second and click back inside the chart. So now I've got the actual chart itself. You can tell it's selected by the little grab bars that are in the corners along the sides. 
and I'm going to decrease the size of this chart to give me some room for putting in an x-axis and a y-axis label and I will decrease its horizontal size too. So now let's put some labels on here. So I'm going to go to insert tab and select the text box and I will click on where I kind of want it to be and I'll say test score value or values. I guess you can choose what you want to do for that particular x-axis label and I'm just changing the size of the of the text box and then I'm going to go ahead and just grab it and select it and move it to where I want it to be. So I like that one. Now I'm going to insert another text box for the y-axis so I'll click on the text box click there and I'm going to type in frequency and click someplace else and I'm going to go ahead and change the size of this text box decrease its vertical size a little bit here and now I'm going to go ahead and just spin it so it's vertical and it'll fit nicely alongside that y-axis. And So now we've got a, a y-axis that's labeled frequency, we've got the test score values along the x-axis, um, we've got everything plotted in here, it gives you a pretty good idea as to what these test scores look like. It's a pretty normal distribution. You can see i got a few students here that are kind of sitting out by themselves though in these pre-test scores um, and it's ready to maybe say it's done. Uh, just a reminder now, when you're making all these different um, frequency plots, you're going to keep making brand new sheets. Um, and as you can see from my particular Excel spreadsheet right now, here is the pre and pre post test scores. That's the data itself. Um, here's all the plots that I've made. There's the pretest scores. There's the pretest scores with 50% growth. There's my post tests or final exam scores. Um, the actual percent growth that the students um, showed in that period of time, um, their pre-local SLO and their post-local SLO. And so you'll end up probably having a large number of these tabs along the, ba along the bottom, but I think that's the best way to go. Otherwise, you have all these frequency plots that really start to get very difficult to kind of work around on one single worksheet. So I think you're in pretty good shape. If you have any questions about how to make the frequency plot, uh, give me a ring, uh, send me an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So good luck.